Hi, my name is Karthik from Design School by WQ Algorithm. And in this video, I want to talk about the way in which Search and Filter Pro plugin works with Elementor Pro. How you can style Search and Filter Pro forms using custom CSS in Elementor Pro. How you can use an extension found in Search and Filter Pro exclusively for Elementor Pro to retrieve posts or portfolios or products. Also, we will see how the request parameter works in case there are multiple of them. All this in this tutorial. I've already made a video on search and filter. I'll leave a link to the previous one in the description. Basically, you build your own search form, tell the search form which kind of post type you want to search for, then you customize your display results. You can either pick as an archive, post type archive or whatever. I've explained all this in the previous video. You can check that out and then come watch this video. Anyway, so I just chose to search post types and have some typical settings. I have a search field. I'll also drag category field. And maybe this can be a drop down. I can also have a tag field. You can have as many available fields as you want. I'll also drag tag field. I don't have tags for any of my posts, but I just want to show you how it works. So I'll just check checkbox. So in this video, we built a search form. It's on a page. You can put this anywhere, right? So if you go to search and filter pro, each and every form has a short code so that it can be included anywhere across your WordPress website, right? This is the short code of this form. Just make sure that you also have search and filter element extension in addition to the search and filter pro plugin this will be available in your in your search and filter dashboard just go to your search and filter.com and download this extension once you do well in your any of the form if you click on display results you'll now have a new option called elementor post portfolio or products just select that update I'll remove this page, I'll create one more. Now what we're essentially doing is that we'll use the search query used using the search and filter pro form and we'll use Elementor post with it and filter it using this search query. Well, you don't have to write a single piece of code. All this works automatically. I'll show you how it works. So let's create a page. I'll just call it custom query page. I'll just hit edit with Elementor. Now we're taken to Elementor interface. I'll just make it Elementor canvas for the time being, just so that you can see the results. Now use the Elementor post widget. You can also use the portfolio widget or even the products widget. I'll use Elementor post widget and just drag it around. You can see that here. Now, if you go to query and click on source, you'll have a new option. Once you install the extension, you'll have a new option called search and filter query. Just select that. And the query that we want to select is the post search form because we're looking for the posts. So whatever the user searches for in the post, only those posts will be shown in this grid. Right? So that's really neat. I'll select this again under query. Just make sure that you select search and filter query. This is again a part of Elementor Pro, which was released a few versions ago. It's a custom query option, but with search and filter pro Elementor extension, you just get it as an option. Select it, select form. And when nothing is found, say nothing is found. I'll say please check back. All right. I'll hit publish. Now I'll view the page so that I can get its URL. It's custom query page, right? So I'll go to display results option. I'll paste the URL, which is custom query page. I'll update this. Remember the form can be anywhere in your WordPress website. It can be in your sidebar. It can be in your header. It doesn't matter, but the results is really important. So the way you work with results, is really important. I've explained that in the previous video. Check out part one of that. So 
since we have this page let's start where we have our form so i have my form on this page let's search for something maybe i'll search for post i'll just click on submit and now we get an um, elementor posts filtered with that particular query which is really neat let's search for something else and just like that only the post with our query is being shown in the elementor post widget because we set the source of this page to be elementor query or the search and filter query custom query right we have selected nothing but we just went to query selected search and query and the type of form that we want to use since we're using this particular form which is post search form i just selected that in case you have multiple you can pick between any of them you can do multiple forms and then have element a post widget across multiple pages and you can do different kinds of queries but for now i just searched query that's really neat so that's how easy it is and how nicely it integrates perfectly into element pro now that's really great right now i have four fields the first one is a text box the second one is a category field and that's a drop down and the third one is a checkbox and the last one is a submit button now if you have elementor theme styles enabled your forms are styled just a little bit otherwise they'd look something like this right there's no proper styling defining all these but what if you want to style these forms yourself well you can do it using custom css it's quite simple i'll show you how so i'll open up the elementor interface i'll also have the front end of the page active or wherever this form is just so that you can inspect various elements click on advanced let's go to custom css now we need to understand the structure of the form right this is just a form no matter what it's doing it's still a form that means you can style it using custom css now i'll right click and i'll inspect and the class of the form is search and filter you can see that here so for the whole form the class is search and filter so i'll use that since it's a class dot should be used search and filter and within the form we are looking to target the search field so what is the class of the search field it's sf input text you can double click and the class name is highlighted we'll copy this and i'll paste after a dot right let's change the width of this maybe 500 pixels let's see how that will look like now i've updated this you can see the width of the field is changed right let's lower this window a bit down i'll just put it back to 300 pixels or so or let's do viewport maybe i'll do 30 vw we'll see how they will look like so it's 30 percent of your viewport width it's responsive so it's always looking good you can do the same thing for the next field again i'll click this i'll click on the drop down menu the class is this i'll just double click to highlight the class name command c or control c to copy the class name i'll paste the class name and before the class name we need to add a dot since this is the form i also need to include this search and filter so dot search and filter stands for the whole form itself and within that since we're looking for select i need to add a space now flower places don't worry i'll leave this code in the description then you can work with your own or experiment with your own also to my text field i want to add a border so i'll say one pixel solid black or any color that you want i'll reload this we'll see how that will look like and just like that it looks better readable and it also looks neat 
I will have the same width for the select field as well. So I'll have 30 VW. Let's see how that will look like. So both of them will essentially have the same width, right? Again, you're going to have a border for this. I'll copy the border property. And this time maybe I'll change it to blue. You can change it to any color. I'm just showing you an example of what it's capable of. Again, I'll reload the page. And just like that, the border of the select field is blue. You can also align these. You need to target the checkboxes. So the main class holding these checkboxes is SF input checkbox. Or it's this one, right? So I'll target this class. Again, I'll use search and filter class. So within the form, we're targeting the checkboxes, right? Don't worry, I'll leave this code in the description, but this is how you should analyze. And I'll change the display to inline. Let's try with inline block and see how that will look like. Didn't change any of it. So I'll change it to inline. Let's target this SF level zero class then so that all the items within this class are inline instead of the checkbox class. Let's see if that works. And just like that, we have a checkbox and checkbox op options are basically inline. Let's also add a margin to it. Maybe five pixels would be enough. I'm just a semicolon. I think that should do five pixels of margin. Let's see how that will look like. Pretty neat, right? Now in the previous video, I showed you how to use request parameter for a single field but what if you have multiple fields so let's say i search for post and i search for in beginner's guide you can see that there are multiple request parameters in the url so there is one called underscore sf underscore s and then there's one called sft underscore category how do you get tokens or how do you use elementor pro dynamic tags to get values well in a similar fashion since this is actually landing on the custom query page on the custom qu query page in the backend you can get both of the headings so let's add a section with two columns i'll copy the heading widget and i'll paste it into the second column now i'll click dynamic tag and I'll use request parameter. I've shown this in the previous video, but we're doing it for multiple parameters. The parameter is get. So the first one is SF underscore S. So just copy this value or this thing after question mark and before equals or before equals, you get this name value page. So these are called name value page. Essentially, they send data. Essentially, they tell this particular page what kind of search query is being sent so you can see that a search for post and i selected the category called beginner's kit that's what it's telling is so the first token that we need is this so i'll copy its name in my custom query page where the where this whole thing or the whole element of post grid is being shown i'll paste the parameter name i'll do advanced i'll say you searched for So whatever the user searches for in the text field, that value will be shown in this heading field. And I'll do something similar with this. I'll click on request parameter, click on request parameter. It is get and the second parameter is this. I'll copy it again. If you have multiple filters, you'll have multiple name value pairs such as this one. Just copy the first one, go where you're landing and put its value there. So SFT category, 
and I'll say under category. Right? We'll see if it works. I'll use some minimum height for this. And let the height be maybe those many pixels. Update. Now I'm on this form. So you can perform search query from anywhere. So it's post. I'm going to select beginner's guide. Click on submit. And just like that, the first heading says you search for post. And the second heading under category, it gets the category that we pick using the drop down. Let's pick another category here. Let's submit the search field again. Now we don't have any results, but we get the correct dynamic options using the request parameters. We're able to display or show user what he searched for, right? So I'm saying you search for post that is his query under category plugins. But since we found nothing, I'm showing you this message. Let's see one, two, three. And if you don't pick any category, only one request parameter is sent. You can see that here. And just like that, it's being, or if you directly pick a category itself, it, it only shows that only a category parameter is sent as a request to this page and nothing else is there. And it works just like that. So this is how Elementor Pro and Search and Filter Pro plugins work together. I'll leave this CSS code. Check out the description. That's it for now. See you in the next one. If you don't have Elementor Pro, you can get it from the link in the description. If you don't have Search and Filter Pro, head over to searchandfilter.com. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace.